Okay, and give me a, a noun. Um, squash. Squash. Okay. <clears throat> okay. This one is proper care of the scalp. Don't neglect your scalp. Even though you don't know it, your scalp may be stupid. This can cause your hair to turn stinky and old. An obtuse scalp is due to overactivity on part of the squash gland and to excessive production of the squash normally present in the skin. For a healthy scalp, wash your head dumbly every night in freakish water and then take a hot squash shampoo. Then massage your squash for five minutes with a sharp squash. If you suffer from gooey hair, soak your squash regularly in a squash of vinegar. Good luck. Today we're talking about squash. Squash. Talking about squash. Squash. That'd be a squash. This would be a squash. That is a yellow summer squash. Yeah, this is a, a yellow adolescent summer squash. See, there's yeah. a lot of different squash. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I almost feel disingenuous um, calling this episode a squash, squash. episode because we had this discussion earlier this morning yeah about what the hell's the episode called so i, mean, I gotta get the mad lips the dog's eating <laughs> <laughs> okay. um because there's a lot of different squash um i actually learned that the family that squash is in which is cucurbitaceae mm -hmm. or whatever has the most amount of edible food amongst all the plant families this is we're talking about pumpkins mm -hmm. talking about watermelon cucumbers and, and whatnot. cucumbers yeah this squash butternut squash acorn squash you, you got it we're talking about squash bumpy squash bumpy squash bumpy squash uh, there's there's crooked neck squash there's straight neck squash there's curved neck right there's curved neck squash there's um boomerang squash boomerang down under squash there's gen z squash there's boomer squash <laughs> Uh, a lot of different squashes a lot i mean there's it makes up all, all and so this is i don't feel like this is even all that representative of squash because it's not it's not hard you can you know oh you can she's eat, going right for it you can eat episode. the rind yeah and if you let these grow more mm -hmm. they get that hard armor like exterior Yeah, because these are technically kind of like the green bell peppers from the last episode these are plucked before yeah they're done growing they're right? young uh -huh. they're adolescent so they're stripped straight from the mom I mean, we got the the veal of uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> of the vegetable world these are the, these are the veal of 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 squash you're the only ones i ever buy though why is that i'm afraid of the hard ones because i they're more complicated i don't know how to do them i mean with the like butternut squash spaghetti that's like squash. a favorite one spaghetti squash well spaghetti, yeah butternut ones <laughs> you just kind of cut it and then you put it in the oven and bake it and then you got yourself baked squash i just think one of my least favorite things to do when eating is like scraping <laughs> like food that i don't even like that much mm -hmm. out of a shell that's why i would never eat turtle <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a lot of work i don't involved like the work with that one um but on one hand i mean it provides its own bowl it, so it's, you don't have to dirty the dishes yeah but at least it should be filled with something good. Mm -hmm. Like if squashes were filled with like marshmallow. Yeah. I'd love that. Because then you can just, it'd be delicious to scoop Straight out. Straight out of the jar. Um, but I, I don't like a lot of, but these tender ones have a lot different flavor. They're nutty. Yeah. They're buttery. I, I assume you're more of a chopper then. Yeah. I'm more of a, more of a slicer. Get some of that. Yeah. Do it in the mic, please. Oh, that's peaking it. That's, that's making it explode. We'll, we'll blur that. We'll yeah. blur it. <laughs> blur that mic that aggression. Mic, <laughs> um, and like, I never know what to do mm. with these summer squashes. I just, I chop them up and I fry them with other stuff. I yeah, never have a dish. It's a mixer. I never, I mean, people like you can bread them. Yeah. Like fry them. I never do that. It's never well, the star. For you me. don't get home from work and go, you know, honey, what's for dinner? Because, you know. You better have the dinner ready. <laughs> you get home. <laughs> you, you put your hat that. on the the hat stand and your coat. You just got home from the factory. You pull up the paper. You get the paper out. Already set to the for dinner section. She goes for dinner. I'm making yellow squash. And you go, what? <laughs> <laughs> Not a primary meal. <laughs> but honey, it's your favorite. I like it with things. And he'd be right. 
<laughs> this man from the 50s would be he right. Would. I wonder how much squash they're eating in the 50s. I think they're eating a lot. I mean, squash feels like an older person thing. I don't know if a lot of 19 year olds, yeah. their first year of college, are coming home from their grocery store and they're like, I'm cooking squash tonight. Well, here's the thing like, did they boil the squash? Because I think most things back then were, we're just boiled. <laughs> So if you couldn't boil it, you probably weren't eating it. I think you can probably boil the squash. Yeah. Throw in a couple of cigarettes <laughs> with it and boil it up. Yeah. Cut yourself uh, a squash stew. That's why all that's why men from the 50s have more chest hair than, than nowadays, you know. Because it was it was boiled beforehand. They were putting the ash in the, in yeah. the soup. They were boiling their squash. So it wasn't chest hair, it was you just air residue. frying it. <laughs> God, the 50s. <laughs> So if we're talking about squash, we're really, you can't really talk about squash without talking about the entirety of human history for the past 10,000 years. It's been around since it's been, day one. It's been around. It's one of the, one of the oldest domesticated crops. Mm. Um, uh, about 8,000 years ago, Mesoamericans, that's, that's your Mexico, that's your Central America, that's your South America, one of those. Yeah. They're 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 getting their squash into pens, teaching them not to bite people, <laughs> and 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 they're basically living off of it. You know, Aztec, Mayan, one of them. Their society was built off of off of squash, essentially. Uh -huh. um, they're the the big thing. <clears throat> if you're an Aztec, eight thousand years ago, the thing that you're talking about, thing that you're seeing on the news, is the three sisters. Ooh, system of farming that's uh so it's squash is part of it corn and is it uh i want to say it's like a seed or nut or uh but it's your favorite it's my favorite yeah i have a favorite you have a favorite of the sisters potato <laughs> okay. i just looked this up like 20 <laughs> minutes ago and i already forgot it's beans bean yeah. Yeah, that makes more sense. So so there I knew it was something small. That's what I was going for. Yeah. Like nut seed. Um, something like that. And this this was like this was the Tesla of Mesoamerican society. When <laughs> this came out, when they released Three Sisters, people were freaking out. They're like, we get to eat more than a couple times a week. <laughs> you had Elon Tektapa Muskestan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this was your NFT. This was yeah. your 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 electric vehicle. This Straight to the moon gods. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you're planting you're planting your corn mm -hmm. right and then your corn acts maize maize yeah acts as a trellis a ladder for uh -huh. the uh for your for your beans to climb up yeah and then your squash they have really big fat leaves They're, that's at the bottom and it's shading the soil it all. so it's keeping the moist yep. moisture and it's it's kind of covering it a little and veggie ecosystem it's a little veggie ecosystem it's a it's a built-in salad you know <laughs> Um, beans are great to grow things with. They uh, they fix nitrogen. Hmm. It's just shit you get high off, right? Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, they fill it with. Uh, I don't want to make multiple nitrous oxide jokes in in a, a couple <laughs> podcast <laughs> episodes, but it, I'm thinking about it a well, lot. Well, you I could. Guess. Uh, it's on the mind. Um, we can yeah. go hit up like the people outside Seven Eleven. Yeah, tonight. or we can find the guy who left forty five whippet canisters on the sidewalk right outside our house. <laughs> It was you, obviously. <laughs> yeah, so I, I would have remembered. Yeah. I wouldn't have. No. Um, I looked up the etymology of the word squash. Is that bugs? No. You ever heard the fra phrase? Oh, I know what etymology is. <laughs> <laughs> um, Popped up in the 1610s. Yeah. In the Rhode Island area right i read this yeah i have heard this and it, it's just kind of borrowed from a native american from the, word the narragansett language yeah that's what it was yeah uh, i didn't want to say that part out loud because i knew i wasn't gonna be able to say it i right. didn't say it right and i went no. in with confidence but uh i yeah, know it's fun i know the name of i know Nar narragansett narragansett mm -hmm. because in elementary school we had to do a state project and I did my project on Rhode Island, and they have like Narragansett Beach. They do. Um, that popped that's... up when I Googled, what is this? <laughs> that's what popped up when I Googled it 18 years ago. Um, 
when I was trying to find information on Rhode Island, I remember that poster because yeah. it was a shitty piece of beat up white poster board. And I remember I glued a picture of Nargasset Beach mm-hmm. and I glued a picture of Mr. Potato Head to it. That was the only things on the poster because the things I found was there's a beach and that Mr. Potato Head was like lives there. Okay. I think he has a condo. <laughs> he goes um, there on summers. Yeah. In elementary school, uh, I did a report. We were, the class was supposed to do reports on animals. Yeah. And so the teacher brought in a big sack of like toy animals. And each student had to pull one out blindly and then you would like do a report on that animal. And of course, she went alphabetically by last name. Yeah. And so I was the last person to get to pull because of W. Yeah. And so I was like, God damn, like I'm watching all of the good animals go, oh, you've got a shark, you, oh, I got a bear, whoa. <laughs> and I get up there and there's like four left yeah. in the sack and I pull it out and it's a camel. I'm like, what the hell am I supposed to do with this thing? It's like, oh man, I got E. coli. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I learned that camels can see through their eyelids. Really? They have transparent, translucent, trans airline. <laughs> 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 they, yeah they can see through their eyelids because in the desert you don't want to get sand in your eyes so yeah. when the sandstorms kick up they just go do they have a second pair of eyelids or, or do they just not sleep well ever <laughs> <laughs> i think that they do have a double shield oh, okay. method but yeah. the one takeaway was like oh what the heck what are the humps for see through it. uh it's just fat just fat yeah you think that it's water but they're just fat boys. do you remember the first time you saw a camel's hump that was sagging <laughs> <laughs> and you felt disgusted and lied to because i've when i've seen them you know at the zoo mm-hmm. or on you know one of those like non-polished nature documentaries yeah. one of those like back alley youtube nature documentaries they're just sagging like a sad man's nose <laughs> <laughs> i've seen some people at the grocery store that look like that <laughs> <laughs> there's our one grocery store shout out yeah <laughs> fuck us um they're a pretty cool animal i i mean i love I, they got eyelashes right they do they yeah. got the, the mm-hmm. real pretty little eyelashes and they spit they do oh, they're <laughs> kind of kind of mean yeah but they're fun i love them yeah so squash if you're a native american if you're a pilgrim and you're 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 you're, you're you know you're living here for a long time in the case of one and you're showing up and killing everyone in the case of the other. <laughs> you're happy to see squash because that's all you're eating mm-hmm. for the entire time you're here. It's, yeah. it's it's what built this nation. It's what built this continent. Squash fed the world. And they're really good at getting rid of worms and parasites. Uh, when I was looking up herbal remedies, the only thing that came up was like, if you got worms... Eat some squash. Do you eat the squash? You don't plant it. <laughs> I thought you meant like in the soil. No, I mean you have in, like in you. Par- like we gotta purify the dirt. We'll yeah. Plant some squash. No, if you, if you got some some wormies yeah. digging, jumping around, having a party in your tum, uh-huh. e. Uh, yeah, you just eat some squash. I think you eat the seeds, unless they're toxic, in which case you don't eat the seeds. Well, there was that one Rugrats episode where Chucky ate the watermelon seed and it, it grew in his stomach. Yeah, and that's pretty fucked. So I don't know if I would take the gamble. It's pretty fucked, but he didn't have worms. He was clean. He had a lot of other shit going on, though. Yeah, he was a fucking baby. Dead mom. He did have a dead mom. Yeah. I don't remember a lot from the Rugrats. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, you should go back and brush up on your Rugrats lore. Yeah. <laughs> Man, do you think that the Rug- the Pickles family would smack each other with green onions? <laughs> That's a Jewish family right there. I mean, they're not Persian. They're pretty far from Persian, I think. That's true. Cut that part. I just sort of remember that. I didn't want that to be in it. Well, that's a callback from the first episode. So if you're not watching all the episodes, fuck you. So squash grows in a lot of places now. I mean, it originally Mm -hmm. only grew in the the Americas. Uh, I want to show this off more. Yeah, you should hold that up. Proudly. hmm, Yeah. Uh, It grows in a lot of places. I saw that Egypt is an exporter of squash. Uh India. And I don't think they originally grew there. Uh, and what do you know? Our man, Christopher Colombo, it's him again. This guy's everywhere. He's showing up. This guy's a menace. He 
he's a menace to society, but he's doing wonders for Africans that want to eat squash. Because <laughs> eventually it's getting there. <laughs> he brought the squash and the bell pepper. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if maybe they took the spice from the pepper and they dropped it in the squash. Do they have spicy squash in Africa? Probably. In, in all of big Africa? Yeah. Do you, do you think... When Christopher Columbus saw that green onions were already everywhere, he went, oh, man, <laughs> I wanted to bring it everywhere. <laughs> uh, he's showing up and he's taking the squash out of everywhere mm -hmm. after assumingly slaughter. Yeah. Um, he's bringing it to the world. I mean, it's getting around. Do you think he ever had a day? Where he's like, I'm just going to play Bloons Tower Defense. <laughs> like, I'm just going to wear my pajamas. There's probably a lot of downtime on the boat when you can't find India. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, he's has all this. He's doing all this shit, but it took a long time to sail. Yeah. You know, from Spain to here. And then back. And back. So he what probably is, did the whole like. He probably got lost a lot. You know, the clown music. There's like. Yeah. That's how I imagine he went around the globe. Because yeah. he's an idiot. <laughs> I mean, he probably just went around the globe in a time lapse, like yes. a montage. So he, it probably wasn't that fair. Wasn't yeah. that long for him? Mm -hmm. um, but he's being paid to do all this, right? I think so. Like, <laughs> I don't think he's. I mean, I don't know how you'd afford a boat and men. It's fair. Otherwise, mm -hmm. but what's the job he's being assigned to? I assume it's like the king. Is pain is or giving him queen or doubloons? I think Simon liked that one. <laughs> He's like, no, like, get it's off not this Christopher Columbus balloons. bullshit. It was actually rubles back then. So squash have a lot of uh, vitamin C, as is the case with a lot of these vegetables we're seeing. If, if it has color, it's probably got a lot of vitamin C in it. Mm -hmm. Do these yellow squash, these summer squash, do they come in other colors? Do these summer squash come in other colors? Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely like, because zucchini is basically just a green summer squash. Yeah, but that's called a zucchini. Yeah. Not a summer squash. Um, I, they, pro they definitely come in other colors. I didn't see a lot of mention of the ones that aren't yellow. Mm -hmm. It's probably more like a rare kind of drop. Yeah. You know, one in, uh, one in a million, you get in the blood red one. So as we uh, discussed earlier in the podcast, these are plucked prematurely. Yeah. So what do they, do they become something if they're left on the vine well, or do they, they just slowly rot away till they're dead? They just, they become like the harder squashes that you see. I think mm -hmm. for this particular variety, when they get hard, they also get all gnarled, bumpy and racist. Mm. So you don't really want to <laughs> eat them. Um, the Walmart squash. Yeah. For other squashes that you eat, they're like this premature, like when they're young and then they grow to be delicious old people like Patrick okay. Stewart. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and there's a lot of different kinds. And with squash particularly, there's so many different kinds that scientifically, no one really knows what's going on. It's it's an incestual mess. No one knows what species is which. They're trying to give names to things, but yeah. at this point, they're just making up, like, that's Bill. This, one, this, one's, <laughs> this one's Bobby. Uh, it's, it's just an absolute fucking mess. But I don't even know what these ones are. They're summer squash. But there are versions of summer squash. There's crooked neck. Yeah, well, we have to call them there's, something. There, People are going to want to know. There, We're going to title the episode. So there's crooked neck and straight neck. And this looks like a middle, like an in-between. Like that looks like it was trying to... He looks to like he needs a pick-me-up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I don't even know what we're, what we're dealing with here. Yeah. Uh, but but I, do they stay yellow into adulthood? Yeah, these, they, stay, these ones? they stay yellow until they start to rot and turn brown. Okay. Uh, and a lot of parts of the squash plant is edible. You can eat squash flowers. They mm -hmm. have really nice, big flowers mm -hmm. that are edible. You can get them fried in fancy restaurants. They have fried squash flowers. Mm -hmm. You can apparently eat the stems. But I think that's a desperation move. <laughs> uh, now, I'm noticing a trend between uh, this episode and the last episode that, if I'm not mistaken, squash is also botanically a fruit correct it is also botanically a berry they, and a berry because they grow and have the they, they grow seeds. from a fertilized flower they have seeds on the inside yeah. they have um so what are we doing here 
Should have been fruit <laughs> talk. <laughs> Should have been produce talk. Maybe because we can't seem to get our shit together. Yeah, have I'll tell we? You that. The only vegetable we did is green onions, and that's almost like just a leaf. <laughs> it's just spicy grass. <laughs> at that point. So like, yeah, we're fucking up. Yeah. Uh, if you know a vegetable that we can talk <laughs> about, name any vegetable. Name a vegetable. Please write in to we're fuck ups podcast at gmail.com <laughs> fuck um so the thing about squash is even though they were domesticated 8000 years ago mm-hmm. one of the oldest cultivated crops they were actually developed in the 1830s by london schoolboys you see prisoners <laughs> in london would would you know have a game where they would hit a ball with a racket off of a court and then schoolyard boys in london appropriated that game um but it really didn't increase in popularity until 1930 mm-hmm. um and of course you know in squash you have four playable walls it's yeah. one-on-one you're hitting the ball in several playable zones um trying to make it so that your opponent could not accurately return the ball mm-hmm. It didn't really pick up mainstream for quite a while, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I mean, 1830 schoolboys, I don't think, are good at spreading the knowledge. No. Finding out. So like, when did it start to pick up? Well, in the 19, in the early 1900s, yeah. 1930s, in that weird moment between World War One and World War Two, where people were just going crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, they're like, oh, let's start hitting stuff. <laughs> Um, you know, they started playing squash and it really does feel like a 1930s game. I think to play yeah. squash, you have to wear shorts that almost go up to your nutsack. <laughs> um, you have to have really long, mildly hairy legs. Mm-hmm. You have to be pasty white. you to be uncut Euro. <laughs> you gotta be that uncut Euro squash player. Uh, you have to have like a, like a gross beard, yeah. like a little bit of like thick facial God, hair. God, what were these schoolyard, schoolyard kids looking like? <laughs> <laughs> they were beefed up in all the wrong ways. Well, yeah, kids in the in before 1950 were grown men by far. I thought the stuff they were putting milk in these days was bad, but I guess <laughs> back then, you know. I mean, nowadays it's not even milk. It's oat milk. It's milk. It's almond. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's not milk. He likes the loudest toys. Yeah. Have we covered the flavor of squash yet? Not in depth. No. Would you like to? I mean, let me get, let me get you one of these. Because you took a bite earlier. Let me do that in the mic. Yeah, it's it's just kind of mild. It is like nutty and buttery. Like it's nice and tender. I like the texture of a raw squash. It's got some, it's got some turbidity to it. Yeah. Rigidity. It's, oh, look yeah. at the... In, into this camera, please? Yeah. Now into this camera, please? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it. Cut it! How's it taste? Hey, we're back. Um, <laughs> it tastes good. It, it's it's mild. It, it really complements things. I don't, I don't think squash is really going to be a star of your dish. No. Uh, I think you're going to reserve that for your eggplant. Stir fries. Your, you want to toss it in and... Mix them up. Yeah, and and now squash is part of ratatouille, Mm -hmm. which is a dish of thinly sliced, thinly sliced Mm -hmm. squash, tomato, eggplant over a bell pepper sauce. Yeah, and see, it's not carrying it. It's just, it's a component. Yeah, because if you gave me ratatouille without tomato, I'd tell you to go fuck yourself. Yeah, but if you're like missing the squash, you just double up on eggplant or something. Yeah, crack an egg into it. It's a filler in that dish um but it is nice it it isn't it isn't my main priority when i'm at the store it's not i'm not rushing the squash (laughs) (laughs) i'm not i'm not knocking over boxes and shelves to get to the squash Mm -hmm. um but you know i'll slip it in if if it's willing i think it's a little treat it's a little (laughs) A little treat for my for my little boys. Yeah, um, deserve it. What are you drinking today? Well, I'm drinking some <clears throat> coffee. Okay. Next up on the agenda, we have a freshly filtered jar of water, blue. It's a nice, nice jar. You can tell that it's water 
because of the jar color kind of indicates to the audience exactly that it's water that's what i had in mind yeah visual storytelling that's what it is that's what podcasts are known for <laughs> <laughs> and last on the docket there's a little no no juice oh can we can we show that what, censor in post please censor this we want to put some different audio over that too. Can we get some royalty free kids music? Go ahead. Can I have some? Of which? Any? Pick one. Go for it. To your heart's content. Kind of, I was thinking you were going to say no. I thought that was going to be the bit. Like, I got all these drinks and you don't get any. I'm just very generous. I'm so generous. I'll sacrifice. I'll try a little, a little bit of this. A little bit of the no no juice. Yes. I don't want peer pressure to be videotaped right now. Is there anything in with it, or is it just... This is a couple. It's better. It's, it's, it's got some enhancers, some no-no enhancers. Okay. Smooth. Um, speaking of... <laughs> <laughs> speaking of deadly poison, do you have a question for me? <laughs> Did you fart? <laughs> I've been thinking about deadly poison lately. Yeah? Yeah. What about? Like on the bus? <laughs> oh, well, I'm just thinking about it. Yeah. And if there's any way we could segue that into something interesting. Um, maybe something that involves me doing math. Yeah. Behind the scenes. Yeah, no, to, something like that. To arrive at like a silly number. Um. Well, I don't really think of numbers as silly. Inherently? <clears throat> yeah, they're just numbers. What about seven? People tend to think that one's silly. He's he looks like a businessman. He's got a hat. Yeah. And five is like a thick seven. <laughs> five is a hat. That one's kind of silly. He's got a little dumpy. He's a little silly guy. Yeah. And two can just be five, but in a different orientation. I never thought about it like that. Yeah. Um, but that's pretty cool. Can we get some numbers on the screen, please? I mean, I they're already there. They were already put there. <laughs> So how many squash do you think it would take to kill a man, woman, or they, them? So I was surprised at this one, Jeremy. I'll tell you what. When I was looking at the numbers, I was like, are you telling me squash are that dangerous? Squash can't be dangerous. Well, let me tell you. They don't have a lot in them. 97% water, a lot of vitamin C, which is water soluble. You just mm -hmm. pee it out. A lot of, uh, they actually have a pretty, pretty high protein content. Ooh, really? As, as far as vegetables go. So if I'm bulking. Pretty reasonable protein yeah, content. Yeah, what, what are we looking like at? Maybe four grams per squash. I've heard of better, but. But on a vegetable? It's seeming less like filler and more like I should, you know. Yeah, and they, they, they got a little bit of our good friend manganese in them, but like good, like a healthy. Like a good amount of manganese. Yeah, not like yeah. the bad amount. Mm -hmm. Um but really, they're they're loaded with potassium. Okay. And if you listened, if you listened to our green onion episode, you'll remember that potassium was the killer that day. Yeah, it was. Um, it's the big winner. Now squash, they're big boys when it comes to potassium. They're loading up their backpack full mm -hmm. of books. They're that kid where you touch their backpack at school and it literally is like ninety six pounds. And you're like, <laughs> what the fuck is in this? Like, you're not bringing all those books to school. Yeah. And they make jokes they're like, oh, it's full of bricks. And then sometimes you f there's actual like, bricks in that kid's backpack. Yeah. Or a or gun. So it's a real problem in American schools. I don't think we should joke about it. On this podcast where we make jokes. <laughs> <laughs> you tearing up? Yeah. <laughs> um, 486 squash. That's all it would take? That's all it would take 486 to 486 of these? Now, this, type this number squash? was the number from the Green Onion episode where... It, it's about a 50% chance to kill a 160 pound man. Okay. So probably a lot less squash for Simon, the pug. Mm -hmm. Probably a couple more for you. You are bulking. Bulking. But yeah, 486 of these. And when you think about it, they are dense. Yeah. These these bad boys are, are, are heavy. They're pretty unassuming. They're unassuming, yeah. but you could bludgeon a man with this. <laughs> 
I mean, we already saw the structural integrity. Yeah. Isn't too great. So you get about one swing. Yeah. You grab you, another. You get one chance. <laughs> before you're like, where do I put that knife? Yeah. Unless it's in the squash. Uh, and it's all it takes to, to overload your systems. Which makes me question how squash built our society. If that's all they were eating in, you know, in Mesoamerica. <laughs> well, they had beans to offset it. Yeah. You know. Fart out all the they're extra just, potassium. Yeah, they're just shooting. And that was a weapon, actually. They would, <laughs> they would fart it towards their enemies. And then they would, they'd breathe in the potassium. Yeah. And then, you know. That's what killed Christopher Columbus, that, actually. Yeah, it is what killed him. Um, a, a angry Aztec man. <laughs> consumed an unbelievable amount of squash and mm-hmm. farted in christopher columbus and just in the direction of his ship they were sailing away he yeah. killed a man in the back push the ship <laughs> yeah. you know so he got home faster but he was a dead man yep we should have just a christopher columbus episode at this point just uh i really hate how much we've talked about him but, but it's just, relevant this man is spreading veggies he's spreading veggies everywhere or i want to find out that like he actually didn't and it was some other guy on the boat it was, was doing almost it. definitely some yeah, other like guy. we got to find out who it was their like native guide people <laughs> <laughs> who found all this and brought and was like oh we can take this to africa and feed people we can take this to europe and, and like it's... christopher Columbus didn't fucking care yeah <laughs> he's just, you know on tinder when yeah. he's, he's there like, yeah well, whatever whatever you want to do you know what i'm thinking could be fun we could cut one open and see what's like inside yeah well i mean i've heard the seeds are like they're they're big and they have maybe some interesting colors in them Um, really yeah so i'm interested here i'll be right back okay so uh simon you new to podcasting (laughs) so tell me what do you do for a living Oh, you're a whiskey guy, huh? Yeah, me too. You know, I like to have a couple when I come home. (laughs) So you got a new book coming out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, make sure to check out Simon's new book, The Barkening, coming out September 24th. Hey, thanks for coming. What the fuck is this? Oh, uh, oh, shit. All right, we ready to do a little bit of ex- exploration? Yeah, this is so the heart of science is discovering things on your own. Yeah, coming up with testable criteria that you then you know you, you put through the rigor with uh, you know data keeping, mm-hmm. sensory experience and analysis. Um, I think I think what we're doing here is, is beautiful. I'm really looking forward. I think the vegetable community is really going to benefit from this. I we're mean, fu- when was the last time someone cut a yellow summer squash open to an audience? And we're finally going to answer what is in there. Yeah, and I think that's why everybody showed up today to a podcast to see yeah. what's inside of a vegetable. Exactly, to see. Um, while Jesse's cutting open, I think... For the listeners at home who are visually impaired and or don't have access to watching the podcast, I'll go ahead and describe what's happening. Yeah. Um, so we have our squash laid out on the table here. We have a nice cutting board so as to not damage the set because, you know, we're working with a budget and whatnot. Yeah, we only got one. Of these. We only got one. And he's got a very large knife. And we're going to cut this open. So let's go ahead. And let me say, this is a veggie talk first. This is. We have not dissected nothing on this show yet. Not nothing, never. All right, let me just find my my axis. Yeah. Okay. It's a nice clean cut. Let me just, I'll just get some and slices. We'll get a few of those in there. You know? Oh my God. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, this is the most bizarre sight I've seen. Huh. Yeah, that's um I didn't really I didn't really expect that, but that's something new. You know, I suppose nature finds a way. So what do we do with this information? I mean, that's Is that fucking spaghetti? <laughs> <laughs> it must have been Italian squash. <laughs> <laughs> 
We got jokes. <laughs> jokes. Two cents a pop. Coming right up. You want a joke? Got him. You want a joke? Got him. You want... Hey, mister. You want a joke? Come on over here. Well, I now see why squash is good for bulking. Yeah, and why it sustained the society for so long. Is yeah. There's a lot of carbs in there. It's really fascinating stuff. Yeah. I'll, you know, you can get some nice Parmesan mm -hmm. to put over it. Yeah. And that was really prevalent in Aztec culture. Parmesan yeah, cheese. they were, I think, the original inventors of Parmesan yeah. cheese uh, and, and they Blue called it, Box mac and cheese. <laughs> they called it Parmesan, <laughs> too, and so that's where the name John exactly. comes from. Yeah, that's why so many Aztecs and Mayans are now named John. Mm -hmm. I heard a lot from this podcast. It's very educational. That was the goal setting out. Yeah, is to be informative. Is to be informative. First and foremost. First and foremost, um, for our listeners at home... We're not being informative. <laughs> <laughs> um, For those of you that are watching because you're auditorily impaired, would that be the right word? Audito audio and, visual. And impaired. you're only reading the captions because you're deaf. You can't pick up on the tone of voice. We're joking. We should get this podcast in IMAX. Would that look good? You, you'd see good. you'd see Simon clearly. You'd see your your fresh shaven face real clearly. Yeah. You'd see your foot on top of my foot slowly stroking under the table. That's not happening. Very clearly. It's one thing to lie about um, spaghetti being inside squash, but it's another <laughs> to lie about our feet touching. It's spaghetti squash. <laughs> Simon just bolted in the room. <laughs> huh? Dinner. <laughs> um. If you had to have an animal as a cod piece, what animal would you pick? As a as a cod piece? A cod piece. Like a like a dick armor that you wear as like a belt. Maybe like an anteater. Anteater would be pretty pretty yeah. good. It's phallic. Yeah. You're not losing the association no. there. Like you don't want like a like a boar's head, you know, a gnarled, smushed no, boar's you, head because it's you keep it fun. Yeah, you want like the lifted truck of cod pieces so that, you know, <laughs> when you're wearing it around, people know what you're about. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's the thing. What are we going to do with these squash? What are we going to make? Cook them up. Are we going to donate them like the last batch? Yeah, we could definitely donate them like we do all the food we buy on this show to the shelters. And if you're Gavin Newsom listening at home, it's a tax write off. It is a tax write-off because once again, three weeks in a row, this is bought with food stamps. <laughs> Today I was like, I could go buy, like go to Smart and Final or Costco and buy like 500 like ice creams and then like sell them at the, with EBT mm -hmm. and then, like sell them at the beach to like hot and hungry tourists. <laughs> and that'd be textbook food stamp fraud, right? Uh, probably, but who's going to like know? Because that would be really easy. Unless there's the one it. guy monitoring your account. Oh, I'm like, like this, did, you, did you buy 500 ice creams today? And you're buying a lot of barbecue sauce <laughs> with, good with barbecue those food sauce. stamps. Yeah, that's what it's for. It's for barbecue sauce and prop food for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, was getting, I was getting worried today where I was like, okay, what are we going to do? Because, I, I mean, you know, uh, people have brought up, mm -hmm. what are you going to do when you run out of vegetables? Yeah. And we have been like, there's a lot of vegetables. We're not going to run out of vegetables. Yeah. But today I was like, at the store, there's only like maybe 50 vegetables. <laughs> um, yeah. So what, <laughs> what are we going to do when we hit episode 50 and we have to start doing like remakes of previous episodes? You remaster them and remaster 4K, them. you know. With some Dolby digital audio. Yeah. Uh, like I was getting worried. Maybe then we will have to just be fruit talk. That's down the down the road, though. I, I think we, we do our vegetable era. We see where we're at. And then, you know, people think that we've we've gone away. Beloved series lasted, what, four seasons? Yeah. Uh, and then 10, 20 years, we get a reboot. 
And it's going to be Fruit way talks. worse. Yeah. It's the writing is diminished. They're going to recast you. I'm a monkey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm going to be old and fat. Mm-hmm. Like I'm going to, I'm going to just be completely different looking. Um, is this funny? Depends if the camera's picking it up, but I'll say, yeah, I'll give you a thumbs up on that. <laughs> um, should we should we get our, our viewer write in question yeah this week yeah um that is to say should we pose one no why do we have to do the work that is true uh if have you, we gotten any um i, I got a I who got, has access to the gmail do we know is it like somebody we have to contact like up at corporate no i've been sorry i stopped because i felt the house shaking and i wasn't sure if it was you the world or the person upstairs well simon jumped on the couch no i felt nap- more he's napping there is a vacuum cleaner up there yeah i hear that um <clears throat> if you are a viewer and lover of this podcast or a viewer and lover of either of us or a hater because that could be fun that could be fun or if you have never seen this podcast. If you bullied us in middle school, reach <laughs> out to VeggieTalkPodcast.com. At Gmail. We don't have a website. <laughs> we don't have a... <laughs> Can we get the website domain before? Fuck, is somebody going to take it? Someone's going to take our... it, like bid it, auction it well, back I mean, to us? I guess we don't want the bullies to actually contact us. Our competing podcasts are going to buy that and make it like a <laughs> like a shit porn website. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. We could buy it and make it a shit porn we, website. We could. And then just say, oh, somebody else bought oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah um too bad we have all this shit porn (laughs) write in with the question that you think we should have asked you this week at veggie talk podcast at gmail.com subject line my favorite question is and also put squash in there because i think that you should probably work the word into the question yeah Um, so make it squash related if you're the Zodiac Killer, write into us at VeggieTalkPodcast at gmail.com. Subject line, I did it. I gotta go send an email. <laughs> <laughs> do we know how we want to end the podcast this time around? I don't think we do. Do we want to just hard cut to black? <laughs> <laughs> when I was living not here... And I was first getting into cooking Mm -hmm. and sort of trying out recipes and trying out like improv. Uh, One of my goals when I went to college is like, I want to learn to cook because I don't want to just like be a stereotypical. Yeah, eating the ramen noodles. Yeah, drinks beer for breakfast. And then I mean, you did that. I did drink beer for breakfast and then would also whip up a scramble. (laughs) Um, But so there was an experiment period where I was just it was just miss after miss. Because I, I wanted to be able to like improv dishes. I'm mm-hmm. like, anyone can follow a recipe. I want to be able to like, what's in my fridge? You know, I got I got two bottles of aspirin. I've got a DVD copy of National Treasure 2. And I've got like a like a nice hunk of goat cheese. So like, what am I going to make out of that? You sound a lot like first year visual arts freshman who feels like they don't need to learn about art history. Because like, I'm just going to make art. Yeah. I'm just going to make food. Yeah, but you got to like know the rules before you break them. Yeah, but that's where the experimentation came in. You sound like a guy who's afraid to to put to put, just, put You got to learn a little found, bit first. You, you sound like a guy who's afraid to rub his dick I on know, canvas and you, call it a portrait. You got you got a lot of uh cookbooks yeah. down there. Yeah. So you started with something. Yeah. So you were learning stuff. So I have made some truly unbelievably horrific flavor combinations. I once made like it was like an udon noodle stir fry that had essentially raw eggplant and just milk in it. And it was it was milky white and the combination that I put in it of like sesame oil and ginger and stuff. I guess I fucked up the ratios and it tasted picture perfect like vomit. It tasted (laughs) it was milky white, gooey and just exactly like like vomit. Now, did you continue to eat the whole dish? Mm -hmm. Because... In my mind, I'm like, well, I already paid for the ingredients and I spent the time to make it. Yeah. So I'm going to fucking eat it. Yeah. I made it for me and my girlfriend and I ate alone that night. <laughs> she went, nah. Yeah. And I went, you know, yeah. It's probably because she doesn't love you. Yeah. I mean, like I would have eaten it. Yeah. Because. I can whip it up I again. Well, I mean. I the recipe down. You don't have to. We have the squash we have to use. Yeah. The spaghetti squash. The spaghetti. 
do you like cooking? Love cooking. Yeah. That <laughs> <laughs> was going to lead into something else. Oh yeah, I um I went to an uh, a 99 Ranch market, which is like an mm. Asian market. Yeah, those are fun. And it was my first time going and I was like <laughs> I'm going to buy everything that I don't know what it is. Um and I'm just I'm just putting wringing my hand down, I'm just throwing everything in the cart. Uh, and I, I bought this thing that was like dried soybean skin. Ooh. And it was this long, like rind, like this long, crunchy thing. And I was like, how do I eat this? And I soaked it in water and then I pan fried it and I put it over rice. And I didn't taste it until the next day because, you know, for whatever reason, there was Taco Bell or something. Yeah. And so I brought it as for lunch with me to school the next day. And I bit into this big, sort of like like beached whale colored, <laughs> shriveled thing, and I'm like, not only does this look like a balloon and feel like a balloon in my mouth, this tastes like a balloon. You sure you didn't just buy a balloon? I think I just bought balloons and fried it up. You gotta, you gotta watch that, man. But the nutrition facts said there was a lot of protein in it, so maybe I'm missing out on this new balloon diet. <laughs> <laughs> we should go to uh, like H Mart. For the next episode and just get oh i bet h mart has some wild vegetables yeah something that's like a wild to us wild not to inherently us. wild we're not trying to like other yeah but here. i mean we might go and there might be but. like krang put up a picture of krang Ooh. like one of those yeah like just a little fucking baby that's like <laughs> and it could be fun to have a vegetable that neither of us have any experience with because like even though i i don't really cook with squash all too often i know what it is yeah i can recognize you show me a picture of a squash in a lineup i'll we'll point them out 100 percent of the, the time i'm nailing that me. that's a squash baby <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know you get something different that i've never seen with my yeah. american eyes that'd be fun yeah i'm trying and to th- h mart's just cool h mart is gonna have some something wild do we include this is i've been i've been staying up all at nights mm-hmm. just twisting and turning Going over this question, do we include mushrooms on this podcast? Do we have a shiitake oh. episode, a cremini episode, a portabella episode, a maitake episode, a lion's mate episode, an I oyster episode? I think we put out the feelers in the community. We run a poll. Yeah. We let it run as long as we need to until we have viewers <laughs> <laughs> and have them vote on it. So we're not doing mushrooms for like a year, for, uh, well, optimistically. If we get picked up for season two. Yeah. I think Portobello could be fun down the line, but just Portobello, like fuck good, Cremini. A good starting place to see if people like. I, well, I don't care what people like. I care what to see if we like. Being honest to the source material that we're going off of. I mean, is this a vegetable? Botanically speaking, culturally it is. Culinarily, a chef. If 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 if, if you're working for a chef, and he's like, go to the farmers market, get me all the fruit that they have, and you come back with a squash, and I'm the chef, I'm throwing boiling water in your face. Yeah, I I don't want to have this debate every time. I think we can note the botanical side of it, but if it's on this podcast, then... Keep going. For viewers at home, uh, Jesse is sliding a squash in his pocket up and down with a steady pace. And he's... He finished. Yeah, I think uh, I think that was weird. <laughs> Do you think we could take <sighs> Joe Rogan on, on a fight, the two of us? No. <laughs> like tag team? No, I, I mean, if we stand on top of each other's shoulders, we're at least quadruple his height. Yeah. Because he's small, right? He's, he's a pretty short guy. But, I mean, have you seen his kicks? I've seen his nipples. You seen his long nipples? He does polar plunges. But like, you know, I, I, I get from one side, you get from the other. And we're unpredictable. We don't know how to fight. So we're unpredictable. I think you'd have to really employ some some schoolyard tactics. Like I'm behind with the two thumbs in the ass. <laughs> and then you're in front giving him a big wet kiss. Yeah. I think he's caught off guard by if that. If I'm sucking on his nipples, I mean, he's going to be yeah. thrown out of left field. Yeah. I, I, I think, you know, surprise rubbing a soft finger on his supple lips. In the moonlit grass. Get them with the backhand squash. Yeah. yeah. We bring our squash. Here's what we do. We 
blend up 486 of these summer squashes. <laughs> we pounce on them. We funnel it down his mouth. Get 50% him. chance we're coming out fine. Go for the Hamlet method. Pour it in his ear. For those of you who have read Hamlet, you'll understand I read yeah. Hamlet recently. Pour the, I don't if know. you're Joe Rogan, write into us and let us know <laughs> if you can kick our asses. <laughs> <laughs> and if you've read Hamlet. And if you've read Hamlet. Do you think Joe Rogan reads? I don't think Joe Rogan reads. Definitely not Hamlet. Look at how submissive and breedable he is. <laughs> <laughs> With those fat, swollen balls. So I had a lot of fun here today talking yeah. about squash. I, had, I, I learned a lot. I had a good time. Had know, a few laughs. Had some laughs. We had some bits. Yeah. Hope we brought a sunshine smile to your day. It's always a fun time. Yeah. Well, thanks for uh, watching and enjoying this content and going through this transformative experience with us. Please subscribe. And we good? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Oh, Put shit out there. So yeah. what are you doing after this? I'm just going to fucking sit there. I don't know, man. Just... Hang out. <laughs>